Now a few us, eh? welcome to the show. Uh, today we have uh, Mr. Ambisai Mungata who is going to talk about uh, the spirituality of our uh, African leaders. And uh, today uh, I want us to focus about uh, one, Honorable Raila Odinga. So Mr. Ambisai, what do you have to say about uh, concerning Raila? Yeah, when you are discussing about spirituality, we are not talking essentially about the absence or presence of worship. We are examining the entirety of the person or the individual we are talking about uh, in terms of, of his wholeness, his centeredness, his connections with the reality and nature and people around him, and uh, how deep does he go in all these areas? So when we talk about uh, spirituality, you'll allow me to put aside the whole understanding of whether he knows God or not, because that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something embedded in him that makes him understand God and appreciate people and appreciate nature. Uh, when I look at Raila as a person, one, I see very many scattered pieces of things that constitute him and his reality. I try to find him in the ideological sense. I see absence of ideas. There are bits and bits of ideas picked from all parts of the world that do not come together to form a common picture. I look at the people he has worked with you cannot describe those people with one string. They are just people of diverse backgrounds, diverse nature, that do not constitute any whole. You look at uh, his world, the way he has lived his life, the way he does the things he has done, you can't find any bit that will come together with another one to form one whole. Because every bit if you pick in Raila's life, you put to put the piece you try to put the pieces together it is always unlikely for you to come out when, with one picture and when you find somebody of diverse nature like that that all he has done all that he has been and all the things he has done he, he has is made up of cannot make one whole you are bound to question his spirituality so he's lacking in allness he's not a complete being and will never be completed in any way. So his spirituality in that regard is weak. Now, let me look at centeredness. Centeredness, around what is Raila's life or ideas or actions centered? You, again, begin to go around to examine and question the many things. You ask, is there a philosophy in the things that Raila does? So additionally, there isn't anything you'll find all if you are looking at the life of Raila from birth to the struggles and the things he has done in his life. There isn't one thing you will say, this is a philosophy by which this man has lived. His life is devoid, uh, devoid of even philosophy. He has no thought that you can put together and say this is one single thought that constitutes Raila's life. Then you look at politics. What does he want to, us to become? What does he want even to become himself through these political mobilizations he make? There is in one thing, one central point that brings together the many diverse things he has attempted to do in the name of politics. So you find his centeredness in life is still vague and therefore even in spirituality it does not exist. So he's a man without a center, that just to say in brief. Then you want to see if you place him in the realm of spirituality, among gods and humanity, among nature and all the beings that have existed, how deep can he go? How narrow and or wide can he reach? You look at uh, Mwashimiwa Raila, and you find any surface is placed on in the matters that I have just stated is most bound, likely bound to float. So it doesn't go deep enough, it doesn't go wide enough. He's somebody whose spirituality is 
very narrow, dangerously narrow. So when you look at death, it's lacking in his spirituality. Then let me discuss the final point of his connectedness. How connected is he in regard to his spirituality? The people around him, does he have a friend? None. He has not kept anybody close to himself since his childhood, and not so many people can relate to him uh, from the proximity of saying, this man is my friend. He has used everybody he met on the road, along the way and discarded them whenever the opportunity needed him to do so. So he has not, uh, uh, he doesn't have people he really has an alliance uh, to or allegiance to. His allegiance to anybody, to friends, to, 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 to events, to circumstances does not exist. And even when it comes to looking at it from the point of view of the wider nature, how does he connect with it? This man's concerns are just selfish, all about himself. And when you examine that kind of spirituality, it is very destructive spirituality. Okay. And uh, if I can ask, uh, you have seen him being baptized um, some years ago by the great prophet, Dr. Wall, and uh, you have also heard that uh, he has uh, gotten born again recently somewhere in Moranga. How would you describe uh, those actions? Are they just reactionary? Uh, because I heard him say in a meeting that, you know, people have been calling me Muganga. Now you will not be able to call me Muganga again. Uh, what can you make of those uh, kind of actions? I find it baffling because uh, now let's take spirituality to the real of religion where somebody is supposed to believe and worship a god of some type. Raila has no god and sometimes he assumes he's the god himself. That is why he can be born again as many times as the circumstances uh, allow him. He'll be baptized today, he'll be baptized tomorrow, and he'll be baptized again another day. And he'll say, I'm born again, and born again. The concept of being born again, even from the Christian perspective for him, does not exist. It is all for political convenience, and he does it to just get well with the public, as is required at that moment. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, do you think uh, 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 the, the, this thing of him you know, going about uh, getting born again now and then is of any political significance in our political you know, landscape? Kenyans have always appreciated him and accepted him uh, in spite of what he does. But uh, the idea that he says he's born again is perhaps a way of ridiculing God. He is trying to tempt God, to show God that he is of no value in his life and to prove point, the point to even believers. Because Kenyans voted for him in large numbers in the previous elections and they didn't care what he believed in. He doesn't have to show whether he's born again or not. But the fact that he can go ahead and publicly be born again ten times is just an indication of uh, the spite he has for God. He has no reverence for the God of any religion if that God is not here. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that is now for today. So thank you so much, Abisai, for finding time to be here and uh, to participate in our show. We look forward to, you know, having you uh, here again. And uh, thank you, viewers, for also, you know, taking your time to get to participate in our show. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe for how many minutes? Uh,